Hi, uh, I've created this uh, winter diorama for a contest at my club, and uh, I'm going to show you how I made it. This is my very first attempt at doing snow and icicles and the like, and uh, I learned quite a bit, and I hope you all can learn from my mistakes. The first step uh, is to uh, set up my base, and as you can see, I've glued two pieces of uh, one-inch insulation insulating foam. I got it at uh, uh, Home Depot, and uh, I glued. But before I glued the top piece on, I cut out my river and my pond, and then glued the piece down. Then over here, as you can see, I cut down this area over here and took the piece I cut out here and stuck it up here, giving me several different levels in uh, uh, my diorama. Now to cover this, uh, I used, uh, let me get my can over here so you can see it. This is uh, Glidden's Gripper White Primer and Sealer. I not only use that to seal the top and seal the area where I'm going to be putting my uh, um, realistic water. Uh, I also used it to glue <laughs> the pieces together. It's a wonderful uh, foam glue and uh, friends of mine have told me that it also glues wood together. So uh, I haven't tried that yet but uh, uh, I certainly will the next time I want to glue wood. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, I started my rock formations. Uh, before we can get to the snow, I've got to really get the, uh, the river and the pond complete, and I have to get the rocks complete before I can add snow. So uh, what I've used here is, uh, uh, th there are, are lots of products that are made, but I found the cheapest thing is uh, um, joint compound. It dries very hard so that you can uh, carve it, unlike spackle, which uh, doesn't dry and anywhere near as hard. And uh, I've just... Uh, Put it on with uh, a trowel, a uh, palette knife. Let's see if I have it here. Yes, I have it here. And I just put it on in layers, put it on in here where I want rocks. See, I've got rocks here, but over here this will be uh, a snow covered uh, crown. And my rocks back in here, I, I just, just layered it on. And uh, you're going to need to allow this several days to dry so that you're sure that it's hard all the way through and uh, that way uh, you can uh, uh, carve it. Uh, also back here uh, to hold my water in I've laid a couple of beads of uh, crafter's pick glue that I keep here. I use that for many things besides glue. Uh, the trees that I'm going to put on here, if you've seen my uh, clinic on uh, making end scale trees, you'll see that I use that glue for, glue for uh, making the bark on my trees. But uh, it does dry clear, so when the realistic water comes up to it, uh, uh, you will, it, it'll be completely clear. So, um, my next step is to start carving the rock. All right, I've uh, carved part of the little canyon here that the river cut. And... Uh, I didn't show you that part because it's extremely tedious and almost impossible to do and stay out of the way of the camera at the same time. These are the tools I used. Uh, 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 I didn't need anything else. Uh, remember, I'm an N-scaler and this is a very deep gorge with lots of small cuts. If you're an HO scale, they don't have to be quite so close together. But if you're wondering if I'm one of those guys who gonna cut a rock face and then not show you how, uh, Nope, that's not me. I'm going to move over here to this section right here, refocus my camera, and let you watch me do uh, this small section. Um, I'd like to tell you before I begin cutting, before I ever do a rock face, I uh, look at pictures of how God did it, and then I try to copy that. So. Uh, in this particular face, uh, I'm going to be making horizontal and vertical cuts for the most part. 
Now this is sort of a roadway going up to the house that's going to be up in here. So if you see this is laying over that, so I will just continue that like this with a horizontal cut like that. And take it down a ways like that. And if you are wondering why I decided to do that, I couldn't tell you. Um, again, keeping horizontal, I'll make some layers. And cut down in here like that. I hope this all this white is showing up on the camera. Uh, remember also that any um, open horizontal level is going to be covered with snow. So you don't have to worry about this too much because what's ever there is going to be covered later with snow. And I'll make some vertical cuts here. This is a little too round, so instead of cutting it all square, I think I'll make a divide like that and then square it a little up to each, up to the divide. this. Again, using cutting vertically and horizontally. Well, that broke out and I don't care. <laughs> I can probably fill it in with snow anyway. And I'll we'll take this one off on the edge there. And flatten this a little bit like this. back down here. Let me get my brush. Nice to have a brush to keep it away. Turn this in here. Why am I doing that? I don't know. I'm just trying to make it look like the pictures of rock that I've been staring at for the last few hours. Kind of like steps but not so much like uh, uh, sedimentary rock and just a, a little bit more like igneous rock or quartz rock. I'm not a geologist. I'm not real sure what the difference is. Let me try to do this without getting in, your way, getting in the way of the camera here. But again, cutting it down like this. in here. Uh, and if it doesn't go exactly the way you want, you can always go back later, cover the whole thing with joint compound and start over again. Uh, or you could do a practice piece first. Uh, I thought they will lower this down below that one. Now I see I can see just a little bit of a lip here. I don't know if you can see it or not, so I'll leave that lip there and just cut this off. Make another lip, kind of like a step back. Because that's what the granite rock pictures I've been looking at lately look like, so that's what I will do. See? A little crack in it. Let me go ahead and and remember, you're not trying to conform exactly, and I'm, I'm not a sculptor trying to sculpt a woman carrying a jug on her head or something. These are just rocks. And if the rock breaks, if the uh, uh, joint compound breaks instead of uh, being cut, well that's okay too. Look at what you've been left with and decide whether or not that's what you want. That's some of the sealant on top there. Remember all of this is going to be covered with snow. But I've got a nice little lip there. A little cave back under here with a softer rock or a looser rock. Got 
beaten away by the water. And this right here will be gravel and another uh, talus in here. So it looks like I'm finished with that section. And that is what I will continue to do. On the other side of uh, my diorama, as you can see, I've got some cut in here. And all of that looked just like this. As you can see with my trowel, I just ladled it on. Let's see, where's my trowel? Yes. I just I just put it on and I kind of stepped it back, seeing like that, like I want the rock to be. And then over here I just followed those contours and uh, made them less uh, stylized. So I will continue to uh, finish my rock bed so that we can uh, get the pond and the river done. Uh, I finished carving the uh, rock face and uh, now I'm going to prepare to paint it because we need to get the rock face taken care of uh, before we do the uh, uh, bottom of the river and the pond. Uh, what I'm going to be using are Woodland Scenics uh, earth colors. This is uh, this uh, pigment is especially made for uh, use on plaster and uh, I've got a couple of uh, mixing jars and a brush, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to have an undercoat of some yellow ochre. Just put a little bit in here. Remember, this is end scale. I hardly need any at all. Also, make sure they're properly... You have to shake them up before you use them. Now, uh, the instructions say to dilute it, but I find the undercoat doesn't need diluting. When I put the diluted overcoat on, that will help dilute the undercoat. Um, so, yellow ochre and burnt umber will be underneath, and my overcoat will be stone gray. Now, I've already filled this little cup about half full of water, and I'm going to mix about uh, two to one water to paint and mix that up and when I put this over top of the others it will dilute them and of course I have some water for cleaning my brush so let's get ready and paint the rocks All right, I use Woodland Scenics spotting technique and I'll start by dabbing the yellow ochre I'm just going to do a small section at a time and then I'm not going to bother to clean my brush because all of this is going to be run together anyway I'll put the burnt umber in this darker color goes farther and then I'll take my gray wash and run it over. It's as simple as that. Now uh, I'm going to let this dry and we'll continue to work through and then when this is dry we'll come back and we're going to put a black wash, an even thinner wash, over top of this. Uh, the black wash is about, what, 30 to 1? It's really thin and just run it over like that. It fills in crevices and things like that. Uh, you don't, uh, an, un an uneven coat, hit and miss just like that and take carry that all the way through and let that dry and next we'll begin the uh, uh, riverbed and the pond bed. All right, my color choices for my lake bed and riverbed uh, first up by the shore I have some gray and green is that uh, chrome oxide green or something 
And here I have three different colors of blue, running from the very dark phthalo blue to a medium light blue to a pale blue. Uh, this is uh, Master's Touch uh, Artist's Acrylics. And uh, they can be thinned if you need them to. Uh, I think a wet brush is usually all I need. Now the first, remember in this section right here, I have ground coming down, no rock. As you see, rock here is going to be under the water. Um, but uh, uh, right here there is no rock, but uh, there is some ground. Now I do have some gravel that I'm going to use. Uh, 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 it, this is gray, but uh, it's going to take whatever color I put on top of it. Um, and uh, so uh, I want to, uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out yet, so I'm going to put some color uh, around the shore just in case I need it because it's cheap. Okay, so I'll turn this back around and start my painting. That's some water, and I'll put it in the gray and I'll mix it with just a little green and run it around here like that and do the same all the way around where the shallowest part is you see how it goes down like here so this is going to be shallower here than down here so I'll keep it gray and green there And just that much. Okay, now I've also determined that uh, this is going to be the deep side of my lake over here. And of course the riverbed is going to be a little shallower. You use the darkest colors for the deepest area. And then as it gets shallower uh, the blues will become paler. So, I'll dip in to my phthalo blue to start with and define this dark area. And then go right into my other blues let me show you. Just go right into my next color blue and run right on out with it. I need more light, the more the lighter. And then go into the very lightest. As we work out. palest blue at the corner. And you can always go back in and put darker blue in wherever you want. And blue and green mix as well together because green is half blue. So just run them right into each other. So I will continue to take this up here uh, staying away from the phthalo blue in my riverbed and uh, get back to you when I've completed that. So now I've uh, completed painting my pond and riverbed and the next step after this dries will be to place the talus. Alright, a quick update. Uh, I didn't like the shoreline I had. Uh, before, so uh, using uh, the uh, artist acrylics, uh, the same uh, gray, neutral gray, and yellow ochre uh, that uh, uh, I used 
uh, in the uh, same colors that I used in the rock formation, I went ahead and mixed that with, along with some blue, and uh, I've, I've changed my shoreline just a little bit, and uh, I've decided just to cover that with uh, um, realistic water, and uh, I'm not going to bother uh, with the uh, gravel that I thought that I might have used uh, along the shoreline. So uh, that just about that finishes it with the painting. I uh, also note that I decided not to, to do the uh, um, rock face up uh, on that upper level. That's just going I think I'll have conifers up on the upper level and then the deci bare deciduous trees below it. So we'll see how it develops as we go to the next step, which is uh, talus in the uh, riverbed and uh, some in the pond. Um, this uh, batch of rocks came uh, in one pack uh, made by Woodland Scenics. Uh, you see the different size rocks here and I uh, pulled out what I wanted. Remember in end scale uh, uh, all of these rocks down here are huge boulders. They're bigger than people. So uh, I needed to pull aside what I use and I can use some of this uh, um, gravel around the bottom too. So uh, the cho your choice of rocks depends upon exactly what you're doing. And again, if the color isn't exactly right, well, you can change the color of the rocks. All right, to make the talus adhere to the roadbed, I'm using Crafter's Pick, uh, the ultimate glue. I always keep it upside down because it's very thick. That way I don't have to wait for it to get down to the nozzle. Put some in, squeeze some into this container. Uh, then I'll get my paintbrush, a regular ordinary paintbrush. This is water-based glue. It dries completely clear. It is very, very thick. As you can see, it stands up. And uh, I'll wet my brush and put it in, and then we'll just paint the bottom like that. Any place where you're going to put the talus. Now, if uh, you want to change your rock color, as I mentioned earlier, you can do that with the uh, same paint that we used over here. Use it in the same colors, although you wouldn't use the spotted method on something as a little rock. You can like, mix them together and then uh, dab them onto the rocks to change their color if you need to. Uh, I will wait until I see what my rocks look like before I decide on that. Now because this glue is going on fairly thin, it will dry. Uh, pretty quick, so I'm not going to put glue everywhere here. Uh, I'm just going to uh, put it in that one area and uh, I'm going to lay some of my medium sized rocks down as to where they go. Your guess is absolutely as good as mine. As you can see, my color here is pretty good. At least I hope you can see it. I raised my camera up so you can look into there. I'm hoping it's working out. And uh, let's just sprinkle a little of this fine stuff in there. Maybe I can do it better or show it better with. No, the tweezers aren't working. It has to be. I have to pinch it. Just small amounts. Okay. Now I'll continue painting. See, 
I'll go up on this just a little bit. This uh, ground level, I'll go up on top of it a little. And I will put a little extra of this. It should stick right where it goes. Now let's see, I have a big rock here. here and a little around it and I will continue to do this up in the pond now uh, when I get to the pond uh, I'll just keep it on the outside and again this dark blue area is where the pond is deepest and we won't be able to see any of the talus there anything that's on the bed that's why it's so blue so we'll just keep it uh, along the edges so when I get that done, I'll get back to you. The talus is in place now. And uh, we're ready to uh, pour our water, realistic water. Uh, those of you who've seen my uh, uh, other clinics know that I always try to find the cheapest way to do things. Uh, and I have used... Uh, uh, polyurethane that I got at uh, the hardware store, which cost about a, a quarter of what uh, this uh, Woodland Scenics product costs. But I was very unhappy with it. Uh, it looked okay to begin with, but a year later it had yellowed, and I don't know where they came from, but I had all these little bubbles in the bottom. So uh, uh, I spend the money for uh, realistic water. Uh, look around to see what deals you can get, but. Uh, this is uh, what you want to use. Okay, now this is not supposed to be shaken. I've got a little dried on here. There we go. I've got it. Now, real, realistic water uh, is to be uh, applied to an area that's sealed. And remember, all of ours is sealed with this white sealer and the acrylic paint that's on it. Uh, and it should be poured no thicker than uh, one-eighth of an inch and keep it less than that. Uh, and uh, uh, all told should be no more than a half inch thick uh, when you finish. Now my depth right here from here down to here is uh, uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch. Also remember that when this, as this dries it contracts and it will be a little thinner than what you pour. And also, also uh, the reason that you don't pour it really thick is because when it contracts, if it's too thick, it will crack. If you end up with cracks, after it dries, and it takes 24 hours to dry, uh, go ahead and pour a little realistic water into the crack and that should take care of your problem. So now we'll just pour it in. And remember, don't shake it. And we'll just put it in. It's good if you have a level area. If you don't have it level, you're going to have it too thick in some areas and then you're going to end up with cracks. So instead of keeping pouring until it spreads out there, I'm going to stop pouring. And I'll take a stick, got one over here, and we'll just pull it over like that. Pull it over. Now it will take. I'm going to have uh, three pores, now remember, and those three pores will get me up to where the last pore is where we're going to make the ice. Looks like it's staying a little too thick there. Uh, fortunately, I've got a diorama and I can take care of that. If you're working on your layout, you might not be able to do this. So I will just get it around like that, and now I've covered the area as much as it's going to be. And I'll keep an eye on this. If it start looks, starts looking like it's getting thick down there, I'll use something to prop this up, because I don't want it too thick there, because if it does, it'll crack. What I'm going to do is pour this layer, and when it dries, I'm going to pour another layer, and when that dries, I'm going to pour another layer. And that will all be clear. 
The last layer that I pour is the one where I'll show you how to make the ice. So I'll be back when my three layers are dry. I've uh, put four layers of the Woodland Scenics uh, Realistic Water in and I'm up a quarter of an inch. Still have a ways to go. I didn't get any cracks. I just have a few smudges over here. I doubt you can see where my grandchildren wanted to see if I was telling the truth when I said it hadn't dried yet. Uh, but everything is dry now. And uh, the uh, method for making the top layer with the uh, uh, ice is uh, one that I learned from a Woodland Scenics uh, video on YouTube. Uh, I've never used it before. Uh, so I did a little experimenting. Uh, what I did was I took some white pigment. This is my acrylic, uh, uh, artist acrylic, and I put a little dab in this jar and then filled it, the jar about half full. I guess I'm what, 20 to 1 water to uh, uh, paint. And uh, uh, that is what I'm going to use uh, to make the uh, uh, ice. Now what you can see here, this was my first experiment with it. Um, I wanted it foggy like this, not dark like that. So uh, I, uh, uh, so this mixture was obviously, uh, uh, the, the pigment was uh, too heavy. Uh, I didn't have it thinned enough. Uh, you may want to experiment yourself uh, uh, before you uh, find the proper mixture because again, I don't, I don't measure anything. I just do about. So this is a very thin amount. So, what I'm going to do is pour my last layer of the Woodland Scenics Realistic Water. Okay, I can put in more if I need to. But here's where I need to be careful because I'm getting near the top. Okay, we'll pull all this over. Now, one of the things that I noticed about uh, ponds and lakes is that uh, near the shore where it's shallower, the ice is thicker and foggier. Uh, over in this section that, that I've designated as a deep part, the ice is thinner and clearer. So I want to keep the pigment away from this area. Uh, let me see, I'm a little out of balance here, so I'm going to prop this up just a little. Okay, and I think I need a little more. For this last area, because I want it to come up very close to my shoreline. Now, it doesn't have to come up right to it, because I'm going to have little snowdrifts coming over it. Um, Sure, I'm not overspilling on the back. Okay, how am I doing here? Okay, I think that looks good. So, it looks like I still have a little hole right there, and I'm not all the way up to the edge over here, so let's put just a little more in right here. I don't know if this is showing up on the camera or not. Ah. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm going to use, uh, it's hard to spill out of, to, to drip it out of this, so I'm going to use this, and I'm just going to drip this in like this, and I'll, I don't know if I'm going to need more, or I guess I'll use the end of this paintbrush, and we'll just swirl it in. Looks like I could use some more. Right up on the edge. I'm uh, happy with my fogginess. It looks like I've got about the right mixture. Maybe 
maybe just a little more, a little closer, and I think I'll put some through here and down my river. What I'm trying to do is keep any spot where the, I, I want the pigment to actually mix with the uh, realistic water. So that it thins even more. So that all I get is a fogginess And not and not white. I want people to be able to see through this ice. As you can see, it's a little little bit too white there. So I'll just scoot through it and bring it around. Okay, uh, but I want the swirls in it. Uh, and again, as you can see, I, le I left it out over here where it's deepest. Uh, let's let's put this in around. That's still a little too white there. You see, it's okay to have swirls in it. All right, and we will let that dry for 24 hours, and uh, I'll get back to you. So it's been 24 hours since doing the top layer, and uh, I'm liking the way it looks. So, now that we've completed our ice, it's uh, time to start working on other details and putting in our snow. Okay. Um, I have this uh, little cabin I cobbled together out of uh, leftover some old kits. And uh, I'm going to fix it up so that it's uh, been in a snowstorm. And uh, for using the drift on the roof, I'm going to use uh, white caulk. It's $2.50 for this at the Home Depot. That's rather cheap. So we'll just squeeze some of that in here so I can get at it with my knives. Yeah. Oh, that's probably enough. And we'll take our knife and put it on and try to drift it over the E just a little bit. Now we're going to be making icicles too, but uh, this is all you do. Like you were frosting a cake. Really. Uh, I don't want that down there because that dries white and if I'm going to have an icicle it needs to dry clear. Uh, this top part after the uh, caulk dries, see so kind of layer it back up to see the swirl as it comes back up. And make sure you get all of the roof covered. Okay, and we won't need to put, I'll put some snow up here later. Right now we're just doing the huge accumulation on the roof. And I will continue to do both sides of this and get back to you when it's dry. Uh, while I'm waiting for the snow on my cabin to dry, let's do a tree. Um, I have my uh, Glidden Gripper sealer that uh, I used in the beginning and uh, I will use that the regular paintbrush uh, make sure your paintbrush is dry when you dip it in here because you don't want to dilute it any but just go ahead and 
glob it on in the forks. Anywhere you see a fork, glob in some of the sealant. Like that. Wherever there's a fork. And uh, it's only necessary, if the fork is parallel to the ground, it's only necessary to put it on one side. The snow won't stick on the other, but if it's, if the fork is vertical, is uh, not parallel with the ground, then you might want to put it on both sides. And uh, here on both sides. And then when I get finished with this, this of course also is a glue. Remember, I use it to glue my foam together. <laughs> So, to add a little texture to this smooth paint, because that's what it is, paint, to add some texture to it, I will use some of Woodland Scenic's uh, Soft Flake Snow. The same thing I'm going to use to cover the ground and give texture to it when we get ready to do our finishing touches. But uh, I have uh, several of these trees that uh, I made for this particular diorama. Uh, I have a clinic on making uh, N-scale trees and uh, it shows making this tree, I believe. <laughs> and of course, uh, you can make them any size you want. But as I get all these forks done, and I'm just about done now, I'll uh, get down here in the base where there'll be a little more and a little out here along the roots like that set that aside and here is the uh, snowflake and uh, for this purpose I'll just snow it down on top of this white and it will cling to the paint and give it some texture. And uh, that's how I'm going to do the trees. Now uh, I will complete the ground the tree goes on before I plant the trees. But I have to plant my cabin before I do the ground. So uh, 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 I will complete my trees here and by the time I finish that the, the cabin should be dry enough and uh, uh, we will coat it with the uh, snowflake. All right, this is a truck that's going to be buried in the snow, so I've piled some uh, uh, white caulk on it, and it's dry. Uh, now I want to put uh, some snow on it, and to make the snow adhere, I'll just take some plain old white glue. Looks like my cap is clogged. Okay. Take some plain old white glue, full strength, and my paintbrush. And I will just dab it on all over. Let it kind of careen over the sides a little bit. Just let some of it slip over the sides like that. You know, it gets a little more on the hood. Because I sort of want the sides to be a little open so people know what was there. <laughs> and of course up on the fenders here. Top of the wheels. Like that. And then, once I have an adhesive surface, we'll just snow on it. Like this. Be 
me shake that off a little. Like that. And we'll put a little coat on top. I have some, uh, uh, let me put some in an eyedropper. I have better control. I keep this eyedropper for using small amounts. This is two to one glue, two parts water to uh, one part white glue. And you seal it in with that. And as a matter of fact, after I put this in, put this on, we'll just thicken it up a little. Like that. Okay? Now, what I will do is when I'm ready to place it on my diorama, I'll leave it in place and uh, I will put more of this glue on top of it, snow it in until it's covered up and only parts of it will be showed. Will be, be showed. Uh, another vehicle I'm going to have is this pickup truck. Now this one isn't covered in snow because this one's been on the road. It's what brought the ice skaters out there. So I've done this exactly the same way I did the trees. Uh, I painted it with uh, my uh, white sealant and then I snowed on top of it. And if I want more, I can put a little of this glue on the top of it and snow on it some more. But I think if it's been on the road, this will be good. I, I might put a little around the... We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get there, but I got the major part of this done. So, uh, uh, now uh, my uh, roof should be dry and uh, we will treat it the same way we treated this. So here are my snowed in vehicles. Uh, I have them on my layout or the diorama while I'm waiting for my uh, third coat of uh, uh, realistic water to dry, but uh, I believe that came out fairly well. And now we'll get to the cabin. So my caulk is dry on my cabin. And uh, we'll go ahead and cover the side with white glue, full strength. I want to get it over the edges coming around so we won't, so they won't be quite so straight. Flopped over the edge there like that and we'll be attaching icicles under it. That will be the next step. I'll show you a simple way to do icicles. It's a little easier in end scale because you don't do each individual one, you can't <laughs> kind of glob them all together because they're so small. But uh, again, I want this glue globbed on there. I want it big. I want the glue to soak into the, to the uh, snowflake that's around it. And put a little on the edge here like that. Covered up there, white on white. Yeah, I think I've got it all there. So we'll do this side and then do the other. Um, so once the glue is on, just snow on it. Like that. And we have our snow. You can add layers to it as you need. So we'll do the other side and that will be ready to place uh, on a diorama. Uh, there are several products you can use to make icicles. Uh, Woodland Scenic's water effect uh, works very well. Uh, clear caulk from the uh, uh, clear silicone caulk from the hardware store works. Uh, although I don't think it dries clear enough to suit me, the uh, water effects does, but it's a really expensive. Uh, I use craft, Crafters Pick Glue, and uh, it's a very simple process. If you're making icicles in HO or N scale, uh, HO or O scales, you just run it out like that. And 
pull it to a point. And that will dry completely clear. But uh, that's a pretty big icicle. So uh, I'm just going to make a line like this. The slower you move, the thicker the line. The faster you move, the thinner the line. And then, uh, since I'm going to be doing the front ease of the house, I want to put them at an angle. So I'm just going to kind of pull out my icicles like this. See? Now, uh, when, when these dry, they'll dry clear. Some the other way, and they'll just pull off this wax paper. I guess I didn't tell you about the wax paper, did I? So we'll pull them off the wax paper, and of course they'll have a flat side and a round side, and you'll want to put the round side facing out. But we'll just use a little more of this glue and glue our icicles, and of course on the side. It comes straight down, so you just pull it down like this. Because this is the only way I know of to make icicles small enough to be on an end scale uh, layout. Remember, 1 16th of an inch is 10 inches in end scale. So uh, that's how you do it. Uh, I have some that I did earlier. Uh, they adhere a little bit to the plastic, so don't pull it out and stretch them out and break them. Just we want to keep them. On up. But uh, now I'll cut these out that are hanging down like that and put them up on the side. Can't do it right now because my snow's not dry, but as soon as it's dry, we'll take a little of this glue and attach it, but you see it dries clear. And this is how I will make the icicles that I will apply all over uh, any vertical surface. You notice on a tree, you don't have anything very vertical, everything is going up and so the snow kind of falls down. So you don't usually have icicles on trees unless you've got a big branch that grows out. But then again, there's not a lot of snow on top of the branch because the branch isn't that big. Whereas on a roof, you've got a great big roof with a lot of snow up there so there'll be a lot of melt and you're going to have icicles. Especially since this cabin doesn't appear to have gutters. So that's the icicles, and then we will move on from there to the next step. Right, I've uh, mounted my uh, cabin on my diorama, and you can see I've uh, attached the icicles. Uh, they look fairly good. I'm pleased with them. I have my outhouse in the back. Now I'm going to do this work on this upper area here, including the road coming down with footprints in the road from the cabin. I'm going to attach this uh, vehicle and have tracks leading in and we'll complete that half uh, before we install the trees up here. All right, for the snow, you've seen me put snow on uh, the roof, and uh, you've seen me put snow on these vehicles here. Uh, it's pretty much the same way. Uh, I have a brush. I've got a jar of, of uh, full-strength white glue, and uh, let's get it over closer, and I'll just start applying it. like this. Put it out over the rock face here like this and it can even be a little thick. And remember the uh, the glue will not stand up too much but the thicker you place it, the thicker you put it, the more snow will be there. Uh, I'll bring it up here and remember you can always add another layer on top just like I did uh, with those vehicles I showed you. But I'll bring it out to the edge there and while this glue is nice and thick 
I'll go ahead and set my vehicle down. I stopped right here. And the people got out and went over to skate. And uh, you may notice over here, uh, I thought it was a little steep for the people to get down to the ice over here, so I went ahead and cut myself a little Jacob's Ladder path in there to get down to it so it's not so steep for them. And remember, any place you get glue when you, uh, uh, you're going to have snow. Uh, I'm going to take care of little lips and things like that and the rock face together. I'll do that all at one time, but for now I'm just going to continue painting until I get all of this area I'm working on covered. So now that we have the uh, glue down, I'll take my uh, soft flake snowflake, snow from uh, Woodland Scenics, and I will begin to snow everywhere. Now don't worry if it gets in a place that you haven't put glue, it'll fall off of there. Don't worry about it being too thick. The part that the glue doesn't get to will come off. I want to get a little, let's see, uh, I want some snow to be under the truck there, so let's uh, just blow it under <laughs> so that there's snow underneath the truck. And continue to place the snow. By the way, uh, I, I work on a glass top, and when uh, I get ready to uh, dump the uh, snow that's not glued, uh, I'll be able to brush it back in to the uh, jar and save it. It's alright if snow piles up along the side of the buildings. I may go and if there's not enough there I'll go back and put some more there. But for right now uh, this is all it takes and I am going to, uh, before I dump it off, I'm going to let it sit for a while. But uh, one of the things that I need to do right away, now that I have the snow spread, make sure I have enough behind there, I can't really see, uh, is to make my footprints. I'm going to need a little path coming out of here. going around the back this will look different when I uh, dump the extra snow off but we're also going to have skaters coming down here and I'll see what this looks like and whether I have to do any more to it later to make it look right when I dump the extra snow off. Okay? And we'll have some like this one. Looks like I might need a little snow there. Here, let's take some of this extra and put it down there. Because all the glue that I put down, I do want to have snow on top of it. I don't want it to dry without snow on it. So, I'm going to finish the rest of this in the same manner and then we'll uh, get to the uh, river. Okay, change in plans. Uh, I didn't like what I had here when I dumped the snow off so when I worked on the other side here this is what I've decided. Again, I put the glue down the same way I showed you and I've uh, dumped all of the snow on. Uh, I'm going to uh, brush away the snow that's down on the ice. Uh, I'll decide later how I'm going to do snow on the ice. But uh, for right now I'm going to brush it away. I'll just brush it up onto the bank. And you see these nice drifts that I have along the bank here. You see how the snow has fallen down. 
and I'm going to put just a little more on the rock face here. Now you notice the vertical faces don't get it, but the uh, horizontal face, uh, horizontal faces of the rock do. And I'll just put that on like that. Again, let's go back. Uh, see, because my next step is going to uh, spill some glue onto the lake, and uh, so I'm not going to leave any snow there now. If, if I want, uh, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do about snow on the lake yet. Uh, so now I will take my two to one glue, put it in my eyedropper. This is the same glue I use for, oops, for ballasting. Uh, made a mess. It dries clear. Everything will be fine. It's just that I didn't want, now the glue is going to stick out there. Excuse me, the snow is going to stick. That's what I, I think one of the favorite things about my clinics is that I show you the mistakes. <laughs> As we learn together. Okay, now, using my two to one glue, I'm just going to drip it into the, uh, this two to one glue also has some uh, soap in it as an emulsifier keeps the beading down a little bit and we'll just once you get the glue in stay next to the wet spot and the glue will just spread instead of balling up okay and if we put it in like this uh, if you can see down here we've got a much nicer texture I will do this not only on the rock face, but all the way back. And that way I can keep these uh, nice little drifting effect of the snow. And uh, as you can see in here, the texture remains too. So this is what I will continue to do. all over through here and I will again I'm going to snow on this area again and do the same thing instead of dumping the snow off I'm going to put the two to one glue on top of it and uh, I'll get back and show you how that turned out all right I uh, spread the glue uh, two to one glue over here some of it's running down again I just as soon keep it off the ice for now but now I'm going to snow on it again I'm going to snow on it heavily because this snow will soak up the glue and remain in place. But because it's going on unevenly, it will dry unevenly. Put it on thick. Now go a little bit lighter out here on the rock face because I sort of want the rock face to show through a little bit. Make sure I get it heavy on the hills. And I will let this dry and uh, come back and show you how it turned out. Right, my snow is uh, dried. As you can see, it stands up. Uh, the tracks I put in here stay. Everything stays. All of the nice texture that we have stays from the glue. But before it's set up, I planted my trees, just pushed them down into the snow. Uh, I discovered that all that work that I spent making the roots uh, uh, was a waste of time because I had to cut them off to get them in. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the, the next thing that I want to do is I want to put some ice on this uh, rock faces here. 
uh, we'll because as you see as the as the snow melts here it, it, it comes down here and and it drips and then when the uh, um, it gets colder in the evening it dries so I will just take uh, some of my crafters pick glue and put it on the end of a stick just stretch it out like that Okay, and this will dry clear and look like ice. All right, so I will take care of that little detail in through here, and uh, then I'll put my ice skaters around. I think I'm going to find a log for the skaters to sit on while they change into their skates here, and uh, then we'll be complete, and I'll show you the finished product. All right, uh, these are the icicles that I showed you. Uh, I think they came out rather well. Uh, of course, you can always go back and thicken them by putting another layer of uh, the Crafter's Pick glue on them. Uh, here are some icicles that I uh, did in the uh, canyon part. And uh, I think all in all, I got a very good uh, overall diorama here. Uh, I learned a lot making this uh, clinic and uh, I hope you all have learned something along with me.